Hello and welcome to another episode of Supercoach Insider. My name is Chris and today I'm taking you through my round four score and team, how it all went, what we all, what we did, what we're looking at doing next week, or my captain options, you name it, we're going to go through it um, as quickly as we possibly can. I just finished recording the uh, weekly podcast with the with Swizz over there and um, so do check us out obviously on all of our socials. Um, Supercoach Insider on YouTube, at SC Insider 100 on Twitter, Facebook, um, all your major podcast platforms, of course, uh, Spotify, Apple, uh, Stitcher, you name it, we're on it, guys. And um, and do hit up us on Twitter if you like. Our personal one, CFX underscore one is my uh, personal Twitter. Uh, Swizz underscore 26 is Dave Swizz. Um, and then, of course, Ben runs our SC Insider uh, Twitter page. So uh, feel free to hit us up there. Uh, now going into things. So last week had a bit of a down week um, and need to make some changes. Um, so I did so. Um, my trades last week, obviously I had the, the Cameron trade to deal with, um, which was the main problem. Uh, so I ended up going Darcy Cameron out um, So to Grundy. So I had the opportunity to go straight to English and I just looked, decided to to fade him slightly at this point, go Grundy, buy a few more weeks, um, make a little bit more cash, and then use the cash that I had in the bank instead to try and better my team. So instead what I did was I went Ridley out to LDU because I do believe Ridley is dead to me as a premium. LDU, potentially top two midfielder. And the, the purpose of that is, okay, so what I really wanted to do if I had all the money in the world was I'd love to have gone Oliver and English, all right? So without destroying my team, there's no way I could physically do that. So best next, best, uh, best available would be to, okay, let's go um, LDU and, and Grundy for basically 50K. Like it only cost me 50K to do those trades. Um, and then everything's, yeah, reevaluate as we go. Now, obviously got a little bit fortunate. Obviously, it's, I wouldn't say fortunate Grundy score. Grundy scored, um, you know, the 144 or whatever it is um, compared to English's 146. So they basically went match for match. Um, Clary only went 121, whereas uh, LDU only went 102. So yeah, I, let's say I netted down about 20 points, but saved myself a couple hundred K because that's, that's essentially what it was. Now with that money, I was able to. I'm able to do things this week, and that was the purpose. So I wasn't just looking at, say, a one week sample. I'm looking at, okay, so what can this money do for me now? But also, what can it do for me for the next three, four weeks? And how does that look? So um, I managed to post a half decent score, two one three seven. Not amazing, but um, managed to sort of you know, roughly maintain. I went down about 300 spots, uh, so now ranked about 2215. Um, now. Before we we do this, I might actually quickly hold on. I'm gonna do this beforehand. Sorry, right now I've just realised that I have actually already made my trade. Actually, no, I don't think I have. Oh well, I'm going to undo my changes and then I'll do them all with you guys live as part of the um, as part of the pod. So I do have like last week. I had the, I had the few different options. I ended up going with option three. This week, I've got heaps and heaps of options, and I really don't know which way I'm looking at going. Um, I definitely think that there's... So, obviously, I have Doherty. I did hold Doherty, and that's one of the things that will need to be addressed. So, let's let's go into the team. Let's discuss the team, and let's discuss how what we, what we like moving forward. So, first and foremost, I did VC Dacos. That was part of the reason why I was able to post a decent score. If I don't get that VC... I'm not sure what I do. I probably go VC led into Bont. I think was probably the other option. Um, yeah, there's 30, 40 points. I just I just miss out on straight away. So um, I did. Def I've, I've definitely had a really good run with captains, and I'm hoping that doesn't stop. But we'll see how we go. Dockers was disappointing. Jim be on field. I think most people do have him on field. So whatever. McKenna posted half decent score. Jones on, on field. So you know two guys, 45 and under. And then uh, Wilmot. I just took his 50. Obviously. Congrats to those that took Cowan for 51, but I just took that. Um, Green, again, fake primo, man. There's three scores between 99 and 106 out of four rounds. I'm not loving that. So keep an eye on Tom Green. He may be out of my side soon. But the midfield's probably a place where I'm sort of like, 
everyone's performing shit. So like, why do I care? Um, I've obviously got Goulden currently in here. So part of this was I wanted to play Chandler on field. So, um, and play McKenzie on the bench. So I didn't gain 10 points there. So I moved Goulden in for that purpose. Um, Set of field a bit disappointing. So after he had a 61 point first half, went um, only went 87. So was burnt very heavily in the second half by the other mids and not happy about that. Um, Hopper, again, looked good early, then faded off um, with a score of 75, which was what Ashraf got. Um, Baker, I get all the rookies scored really poorly this week as opposed to last week where they went well. Philip, who was pretty impressive, he's actually sort of getting a little bit more mid-time at the moment. Um, to seeing what this, that can yield, holding on to him for now. We'll see how we go. Dunkley again, disappointing. Taranto pulled it around after having virtually, I think he only had like 10 points in the first quarter. He managed to pull it back. Rosie got tagged, so, but still managed to pump out an 84. Zeeble was on 80, I think, three-quarter time, but right before he gave away a 50 and a free kick. So his score plummeted back down and then he had to earn his way back up. So that, I mean, that could have been... Easy, 105, 110. But yeah, stupid free kick, Zeeble. Um, Cheezel again, backing it up, loving it. And then Chandler salvaged the score. He was really, really, really low for a log. That goal came at a really good time to bump his score up. So, um, And then, of course, long, 49. He got an early goal, which managed to peak his score a little bit early. And then that's about it. Hmm. So, what do we do this week? First things first. Doherty has to go four to six weeks out. You can't hold dead weight in your team like that. I was looking to, to keep him and just push him to D6 and just wait for him to come good. But now that is not an option. So that is the first thing that needs to go. Um, now I do want Van Ruin. So that is a, that's a consideration. So the first thing that I need to consider is I want Van Ruin. Now the reason why I want that is, is cash gen. Now, at 602k, I don't have enough to go to, say, a Dawson, but I do have enough to get Stuart. So, literally, I could go one trade to Stuart. So, the first thing that I would do here, not stuff around with anything, I'd just get Tom Stewart straight in. Where are you, Tommy Stewart? What's he averaging? Oh, yeah, that 18 in his cycle. Hey, yeah, here we go. So, there we go. That's the, that would be decision one. Let's not stuff around. Let's just do a single injury trade again in this sort of situation where it's sort of waiting until our cash comes in. Um, and we can sort of play this a little bit passive. But I do really want Van Ruin, so I'm probably leaning towards doing a second trade. Now, when I look at my, my team, trading someone out doesn't really make much sense. I mean, if you have a look at all these BEs... Um, they're all pretty decent still. Like Jimby, obviously, with that 40, still has a break-even of 18, plus he's a good on-field scorer. Jones is probably the one. He's got a B of 36. He is tipped to go 37. However, you know, depending on how things go this week, he may get, he may, you know, Keith's obviously in concussion proto protocol. He could free him up for some more points. How many points? I don't know. They play Port. I don't love the fact that they've got the three talls means that he's probably going to have to play a more accountable role, not be able to peel off as much, especially now with Keith out. Yeah, I don't love the matchup. I really don't. Is he going to be playing on Dixon and leading up the ground and getting destroyed? Probably, I guess. Yeah, I'm not... I don't, know, I don't love that. I don't love that matchup. So he's probably the one. I mean, outside of that, I mean, you, you look at all the other rookies... Um, it's essentially, you know, I could get rid of someone like Setterfield, but then I lose that on-field points. I did look at potentially trading Setterfield by going up. And if that's, I would do that if I was going up. Unfortunately, the Doherty injury has forced me to reevaluate my trades. I was looking at doing Setterfield out if there was no injury, but now that there is an injury, I have to trade Doherty, which means if I'm trading Setterfield as well, I don't think that I actually gain on, with points on field. Like, because I've got to spend the money that I have on Doherty to go up. Then I've got to, um, if I'm going, let's 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 have a look at it. But it works out. I think I work out like with the trades that I want to do. If I go Setterfield, I, I'm short by like four grand or something like that, or uh, maybe ten grand. It works out to be. So 
Okay, so now we we know that let's let's say for example we did this, and then we're going to get Van Ruin in. So the only way we can do that is by now trading this guy in, and then you pick up Van Ruin. Let's go via break even. All right, there we go. All right, so 349,000 in cash. Now, what can I do with that 349 cash? Now, in an ideal world, I'd probably you know, trade out now Jones, hey. Now, Jones to, um, here, that's it, yeah. So in an ideal world, I'd go Jones to Dawson. But look at that, I'm 8K short of being able to grab him. So if I go back to normal stats, Jordan Dawson, 618K. That would be an, in an ideal world. That's what I'd do. I'd love to be able to get there, but I just can't. So obviously that means I need to um, either completely forego that opportunity or change it up. Now what I'm looking at doing, uh, because I just don't want to do, I mean, again, I can do, oh, hold on. So I can do this and then that. Like I could, oh, wait. Uh, oh yeah, no. And here's the thing, right? If I want to get, so yeah, if I want to get, um, I can't do that trade there because I need to trade out a midfielder in order to move one of my forwards into the midfield to get Van Ruin because I don't have any forward defenders until next week. So I have to trade a midfielder in order to get Van Ruin or a forward, which is a bit frustrating just the way that it's set up. So I'm kind of hamstrung here if I do want to do that as a, as a cash play, um, which is really annoying. So I actually had thought of, okay, well, maybe I can go McKenzie. But now with Will Day out, do I really want to be doing that? Do I really want to be training out McKenzie when he's probably got, like he, he might get a spike game in the next two weeks, might make another, say, 60, 70K. So it's probably not really worth trading McKenzie. So I don't want to do that. What I've come down to, and if you have a listen to my thoughts on the podcast that we just recorded, is I've actually decided I'm going to trade out Rory Laird finally. Um, so he's the one, guys. And the reason is a few different reasons. But his break-even, as you can see here, 163. So he's dropping cash for sure. Um, he doesn't have a bad run, which is one of the good things. So, I mean, if you look at his run, so this week they've got Carlton. Now, they would obviously do... Um, love to you know, soak up the midpoints, so, so that is a that's a thing. Um, so he, yeah, he might not have a great game this week, but then he has Hawthorne. So does he get the tag? Does does Dawson get the tag? Don't know, but he's been getting a lot more attention recently. Collingwood, they've been smashing the midpoints. Then Geelong, then Saints, and Saints are good, and now they've got a tagger, of course, in Widhager. Then Dogs are good. Yeah, I'm just don't. I think you know they've had their four good games where he should have averaged a lot more, and he hasn't. And now you sort of left going. You know, dogs, Brisbane. I mean, even Gold Coast these days, you know, like they can get a send a cooler to him. But I mean, that's probably a good game. And then they've got West Coast, but they've got Pies again. I just don't love. I don't. I just don't love Rory Laird's run coming up, and I'm just like, eh. I don't know. That's one reason. The other reason is I had a look into um, Adelaide and the way that they're playing. So Laird's stats are obviously down, especially his tackle stats. Um, and Sam Berry obviously not playing, who was averaging nine and a half tackles last year. And so those two absences of, of tackles means lack of subsequent sub ruck contests. And Adelaide are actually averaging 10 ruck contests per game less than they were last year, which is a Big, big danger sign because obviously ruck contest is where Rory, Rory Laird scores all of, all of his points. So if there's 10% less ruck contest, that means there's 10% less chance of him scoring. Now, if he averaged 128 points and he's going to have 10% less opportunities to score, then you know conversely, you would think that his average is going to be 10% less than that. That puts him at around about that 115 mark. Now, personally, do I think that he's going to drop that much? I don't, I do. I, I think that, I think it might even be more. I think that 
subsequently you might see Rory Laird averaging say 110 to 115. Now that's still going to be good enough for one ten, for top 10. So don't think that like he's not a top 10 player. But what it will do, especially with his break even as what it is now, is he's probably going to drop say 60 to 80k pretty quickly. And I can probably pick him up somewhere closer to the buys. Like after this run happens, like let's say let's say I want to pick him up after the buy. He has the buy in round 14, comes back in round 15. So if I was going to pick him up, you pick him up round 15, where he has Collingwood, North, Essendon, GWS. That's a, that's a nice run, North, Essendon, GWS. Um, does have Melbourne. Um, Port, they love to leak points all over the shop. Gold Coast again, and then Brisbane again, Sydney, and then he finishes with, with West Coast. So it's not an amazing run, but it's a, it's a good run. It's a, it's a decent run. Um, so, yeah, not bad at all. That's when I'm probably looking at bringing him back into my team. So let's, yeah, sort of reevaluate. Take stock, get the 650K out, and then go from there. So Rory Laird's going to be out of my team this week, guys. And I'm going to sort of reposition, grab some cash while I can. And when I say grab some cash, obviously with, with Ben Ruin, address the docky situation. This will be my first boost. I know a lot of people have, you know, smashed through their boosts but this will be my first boost that I'll be using. And it's sort of a mini restructure whilst also getting guys that um, I know are going to be important to my team moving forward and having enough cash set up so that I can attack the upgrade season um, with vigor. So let's get out the guys that are definitely coming out. So as I said, Lloyd and then Jones. And then we're also going to get Van Ruin in. Um, so the guys coming into my team, Jordan Dawson. So part of the reason with this is as well. So I, I'm utilizing my watch list more than I probably usually would, but of the guys that I'm in, in my watch list, these guys are the guys with the lowest break evens. So they're the guys that are going to be, they're ripe for the taking now. And if I don't get on them now, I won't probably get on them until they have another really poor game and drop out of a, a cycle. So, yeah. So, Stuart, obviously, with the, his break, I know that um, 160 comes out of his score next week. Um, so, his price will probably hover after this week. But let's say he goes 130 this week against West Coast over there in, in Adelaide. Um, he'll probably jump right back up to 600K and then stall for another week. So, yeah, that's cool. But now I've lost the gain that, of him dropping down to 570. So, I want to make sure I, I lock that gain in. Um, which is important to me. Dawson is the opposite. So he's got a 67 break even as well, or or, some, or 69 or vice versa. And uh, he's, you know, 10K more than he started with or 14K more than he started with, but about to be 650K. So I want to make sure that I lock in him and not miss him for the next however long. Now, there is a chance he does get tagged next week. Not next week. Not this week coming, the next week. Um, with Finn McGuinness, but... We just saw them play Geelong, and I didn't see a tag. Did you guys see a tag? Like, I, I didn't see anything. So that sort of bodes well for me, um, and we'll see how we go with that. All right, the last forward to trade in is obviously Van Ruin. Um, so, yes, this is obviously going to leave me a little bit um, with some cash, which will be a good thing. So from a points perspective... If I'm getting a hundred out of out, like you know, don't as I said, if I, it's not about what they're averaging right now. All right, so so look at this on the screen. It's not about what they're averaging right now. It's about what are they going to be averaging for the next twenty rounds? You know, because essentially that's how many rounds are left, right? So what do we think? So if I seriously think Rory Laird's only 110, 115, well, basically what I'm doing is I'm sidewaysing him to to Dawson and capitalizing on the cash um, gain out of that. And I'll try and pick up Laird somewhere else. Dawson's averaging 124 at the moment. I think he averages 115 for the season now. So for me, with that role, like, and it could be higher, honestly. It actually could be, which is scary. But we'll see how that goes. Not someone that I want to flirt with in terms of not having. Um, and he's owned by too much of the competition to just ignore. Um. Obviously, Doherty out, you know, he's going to be zero anyway. So you've got to t trade him. And, and Stewart is a 110 guy. So I'm definitely gaining in points. I'm gaining in cash. 
um, getting in the good rookie, uh, getting guys off field. My structure is sort of realigned because I went down one defender last week um, as I traded out Ridley. So now sort of realigning that structure to that three premium defense. Um, this week, you can throw the Eon Cowan. Uh, he may have a, a spike game this week with um, Doherty gone, but we'll see how that works. I'm not sure if they're going to bring Walsh in and, and play him off the back of the square. That could be the, the plan. Um, it'd be nice to see that. I think it'd be awesome. Uh, or they could get um, Sin Cotter in. So if that's the case, it might be a bit more of a share of the points. But if Sam Walsh comes in, they play a little bit of a different back line, you could see a spike in Cowan's score. So putting me on him, I think he plays the Thursday night. Gold Coast play the Friday night, I think. Um, so you can have Constable there. Um Yes, they do, yeah. So Thursday night game and then the Friday night game is probably the most I don't care about game of all time. Frio and Gold Coast, wow. Who's going to watch that? Settle in, guys. It's going to be a banger. Um, all right, so yeah. So now what's that? that's left me with? So I've got a target list here. Next three weeks, I want to pick up Cogs, Sicily, and Sinclair. All three of those guys are dropping cash and they'll be at a good price over the next three weeks. That's going to be my target. What order I get them in is just going to based on break evens and and my team structure at the time and how I can I can do that. Um, I'm also probably going to send one of these guys back. So realistically, what I'm looking at doing is Jinbi's obviously going to be coming into the midfield. So I I want to keep him for as long as possible. I think he's going to be good. Jinbi's going to be coming into the mids. Um, Constable's probably going to be I'm pushed to my mid pine. So there's two spots right there. So I'm going to be pushing two guys here or potentially onto the pine up here so I can switch Jimmy back if I need to. Um, Wilmot and Cowan will obviously you know, continue to, to battle away so, so get as much cash as they can. If they can hit 250, that'd be great. That's really all I'm expecting from them. McKenna will probably become my D6 for the foreseeable future. That's what I'll look like there. Um, Chandler, I hope to pump out a few more scores um, as he'll probably stay on field for two to three weeks at least. And what will sort of align, once you know, Gordon comes down, I've got a huge gap in my midfield. So now only having you know, the three premium mids, you know, Setterfield probably becomes Sinclair. So there's going to be some spots in here that I'm going to want to fill up. And that's what I'm looking at doing moving forward is trying to you know, fill out my midfield. Um, now, of course, unfortunately, all the mids suck. So outside of Clary, there's no one really I want right now. So I can sort of, you know, play that game and, and, and it's bought me a bit of time by having some decent mid-prices to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, that'll, that will take shape as, the, uh, as we get closer towards the buys. Um, so VC and C this week, guys. I've actually have thought about this and there's no real clear options early. I don't really even like Dunkley at the moment as a VC. Otherwise, I would, have ch I would chuck him on against, the, against North. Um, with Dacos's score, that, like, there's a chance that I could go Sheasel against Brisbane. We just saw him give up 151 to Dacos and not really care about it. Um, Sheasel against um, North could be a shout. I just don't know, like, with a VC, like, I don't really want, like, a 120, like, which is what, that's what we've been able to see. Like, have we seen anything bigger from 35 disposals? Not really. Like, how Dacos gets his big scores is his goals because he links so much then ends up kicking goals forward of the play. Um, and that's how he gets his big score. So I'm not really keen on that. The Melbourne game, so Gorn versus Draper, like, um, sorry, Grundy versus Draper. Draper, um, Gorn, uh, blah, 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 blah. Grundy has some really good scores against him recently. So I think one bad one and two good ones. So yeah, his, his only good score last year was 129, which came against Draper. And then two in one in 2021. So one was round 23. So that could have been like Q in the rack, Grundy there. Because I think that uh, 2021, yeah, Pies were out of the finals. Yeah, that was Q in the rack, Grundy. I don't even know if you can count that score. Um, but then he went 153 in round six. So Grundy's a shout as a VC. I actually don't, don't hate that option. Um, I mean, if you have Clary, you can probably do Clary. But I think Clary gets a run with roll from Setterfield. So... Um, goat's going to go, you know, um, outside of that dogs against port. I don't love, I don't love that. I don't love that matchup at Adelaide Oval. Nah, not interested in that. Not interested in Bont. Um, Stuart is a shout. The problem with Stuart 
is this time slot. One ten o'clock. One ten o'clock. One ten p.m. Um. So, because who do you captain if you VC? Like, so he might be a captain option there, but I don't like Stewart as a captain because often when Stewart travels, he just he pumps out a ninety and you just get super disappointed. But him versus West Coast is a real, real nice fixture. I'd, I would like to do a VC there, but then, yeah, okay, so who do you captain? Uh, well, you're not going to use this game probably because you're not going to have enough information to make it, I would assume, um, which means, you know, no Tom Green, no Kelly, no Canelio, which is probably what you'd like. You could captain Dake. Can you captain Dacos? Last game of the round. Ooh. Stings the nostrils. You could captain Marshall unless they do what they did last week, which is a sub Marshall at three quarter time because they didn't have a ruck to play against. But uh yeah, I mean maybe. Marshall's Marshall's a decent captain option. Are, are the Saints gonna forward tag? Ross loves a tag. He's not gonna let he's not gonna let Dacos do his thing. Uh, Ross is too smart for that. Can you captain Dacos? I don't love it. I don't love it. So, VC Grundy is the play for me. And then I'm probably captaining Marshall, I think. Ugh. I hate it. But I mean, here's the thing. Like, Let's say I had Laird, right? Laird, who does Laird play? Carlton. So, they, so you'd have to VC him tomorrow night. And then, man, you have to one shot it, man. I'm not, mm, no. Uh, but see, I'm not. I wouldn't even do that. I mean, could you VC? Could you VC Dawson tomorrow night? Is that a shout? Dawson at Adelaide Oval against Carlton with a, do- a Doherty-less Carlton. Sam Walsh back. He's playing midfield. No, you can't. If he wasn't playing midfield. But they like they will they'll send a cooler. They'll, I mean, if Kern, if Kurnow's not named, that's a shout. If he is named, I'm not doing it. I don't think that's the right way to play. Um, yeah, so I'm probably gonna go VC. VC Grundy, I think, is the one for me on the Saturday, and then Captain. Oh, do I want a captain? I don't want a captain Stewart, do I? No, I think, I don't know. It's going to be either Captain Stewart or, nah, and, and again, yeah, he's dunk, how much is Duncan affecting you? I don't know. Uh, probably Captain Marshall, which is going to be, yeah, VC into C in the rucks. Wow, okay. That's it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Sorry about the long-winded captain's area, but that it really is a weird one this week, and um, and I hope that uh, you guys love that. Um, you could obviously, if you've got English, he's the he's the obvious choice um, against Port um, with Lysett and Finlayson. I think that he'll go all right, but yeah, I don't really like Bont um, in that fixture. Um, so thank you very much, guys. Thanks for your time, and I'll look forward to catching up with you soon. Cheers. <laughs>